What's going on, everyone? I'm just a typical, average American here today to react and continue learning about weird British culture facts, part two. If you haven't seen part one, feel free to go check that out or stay right here. But in part one, I am really, really enjoying this so far because in part one, I don't know, we were talking about stuff like, you all right? and learning about what the heck that means and that it is indeed not trying to be an insult as some Americans may misconstrue it to be at first glance. Bathrooms, how weird British bathrooms are. The queuing, which is a modern wonder of nature and Britishness. And uh, tutting, English tea sandwiches. Why do you like sandwiches so much? What's up with that? Actually, that might be one of these that Americans relate to the easiest. So, very good sandwiches. And so, I'm very excited to continue finishing this out today. The weird British culture facts are just so enjoyable and it's it's being presented by uh, this woman who has been living in Britain the last 10 years of her life and basically just the things that have stood out to her. Because when you've lived somewhere your entire life, you stop noticing how strange some of the stuff you do is, well, compared to other places in the world, and in today, I'm just excited to learn about the weird stuff people do in Britain. There's lots of weird, goodness knows there's a lot of weird stuff going on in America, but uh, today, that's not what we're talking about. So, with that being said, let's take a look. In number nine, we've got pet names. There is an infinite degree of nuance and so many layers. Pet names. Pet, <laughs> pet names. That is something that I would never have thought of that would be so different between cultures. But once you say it, of course the pet names are going to be different. This is the, the stuff you call the person your partner or your husband or wife. Little pet names, girlfriend or boyfriend. Honey, babe, sweetie, nookum schnookums. <laughs> Not that I do that or anything, I swear. But... <laughs> I'm really interested. What are the British pet names? There's two the way in which these terms of endearment are used, but here are a few examples. Terms of endearment. There we go. Examples. A girl from Essex, somebody from Towie, might use um, the word babes a lot, right? To um, refer Babes. In America, babe is incredibly popular, very common. Babes. You know, I've heard that. I didn't really know that was a British thing. I just thought, like, where'd that come from? Babes. Okay. Refer to another person <laughs> of a similar age, but then you get an elderly, elderly, elderly gentleman who might call you love or sweetheart love. or maybe a, a dinner lady, school dinner lady. Who's Lo you know, sometimes this occurs in America, especially with older people, might call you love or especially sweetheart and especially in the American South. But, uh, I don't know, it kind of depends in America. Some people don't like it. Some people think it's creepy. They don't want older people, older men, saying, hey, love, or hey, sweetheart. It kind of depends on the delivery in America. You gotta be a little careful with that. But I feel like, just based on this, maybe it's more common in Britain, uh, just by the sound of it, and really no one thinks twice about it. So, slight, slight little difference, maybe. Serves lunches. Yep, exactly. She might call you darling. Yes. And all of these terms, I think, are very beautiful, although sometimes can come across as a little bit sexist these days if men okay. keep referring to young women as like sweetheart or darling. In yeah, that's what I was talking about. Ba little things like that, particularly in America. But overall, I'm like surprised. The pet names are very, very similar between Britain and America, as far as I can tell. I don't know if there's more, but there's a lot more pet names I know of that are between romantic partners, like Honey and Sweetheart and stuff like that. But from what I can tell, it's pretty similar. In a slightly patronizing way, but overall, I am a big fan of this and <laughs> it just feels so quintessentially yeah. British. Number okay. 10, and I'm sorry I didn't mention this sooner, is British politeness. Politeness, politeness. Maybe the, the weirdest cultural difference that Americans have when uh, learning about Britain, encountering Brits, 
The most, di unfortunately, one of the biggest differences may be politeness. Although, again, I'm gonna give Americans a little credit here, depending on where you live, especially if you go out to an American town in the middle of nowhere, odds are the smaller the population, the more polite people are gonna be. And in general, no matter where you are, including America, if you just are polite to people and respectful to people, more often than not, in America, they're gonna be kind and respectful back to you. I think it's just the bad kind of negative uh, experiences that tend to stick out to people, and that can happen in America for sure. Americans can get... Americans, I'll say, they can be the meanest, rudest, loudest person, and they can be the sweetest, most polite person. It's truly, you never quite know what you're gonna get. There was a survey done a few years ago of more than a thousand Brits, and they came to the conclusion okay. that the average person says the word sorry a total of eight times per day. What? Okay, never mind. Like, no, there, then there's no comparison. Like, eight times a day? This is a good way of putting it. The average Brit is without a doubt more polite than the average American, especially after hearing this study. Americans are not going to be chasing you down and trying to apologize for stuff. And heck, even if you chase them down, they're not going to apologize for stuff too often. So, sorry, the word sorry, that's not even a... <laughs> that's not a common word. So I'm already sensing a big difference here. And that one in eight people apologize a total of 20 times per day, which I think is wonderful. <laughs> what are they... what are you... what are you doing out there? In Britain, what are you what are you doing that's causing so much pain and suffering to people that you're apologizing 20 times a day? Now, uh, all joking aside, I know this is really more of a, a production of Brits are much more polite. It doesn't take that much for someone British to say sorry. I think that's how you get someone saying sorry 20 times. They're not really doing anything, especially by American standards. That would warrant much of a sorry, but Brits are polite and they'll do it anyway. Whereas, uh, if you get a sorry out of an American 20 times a day, I don't, I don't want to know what he's, I don't know, I don't want to know what they've done 20 times that day. Because I have, or am quickly becoming one of them. At this point, I will say sorry to inanimate objects. If I bump <laughs> into a table, I will probably apologize. The word <laughs> yeah, like that is... I don't know how true this is. Uh, it's also something uh, that's commonly said about Canadians are very polite and say sorry a lot. British people, very polite, say sorry a lot. A lot. If, if you get bumped into, you might apologize, but it's also maybe a subtle way of telling that person they should apologize, is that you, so it's kind of passive aggressive. Maybe there's some of that in there, I don't know. The word sorry actually has mirrored uses. You can use it to apologize, but you can also use it to replace many other sentences. For example, okay. if the weather's bad, you might choose to say, oh, I'm sorry the weather's bad, even though obviously that is fully out of your hands. Huh, interesting. You might use the word sorry just as an expression of like something unfortunate or dis your not liking something, for lack of a better word. I, I know people say like, sorry, as in like, can't, couldn't hear you, sorry, what was that? Uh, particularly in America, people will do that, but this kind of makes sense. You can, so, sorry is just this <laughs> transcendental word that can mean so many things. You may also say something like, oh, I'm sorry that happened to you. Although, again, you weren't the perpetrator of whatever bad thing right, happened right, to that right, person. Right, right. You can use the word to show sympathy. You can use it to soften your language. You can use it when stopping somebody in the street to say, oh, sorry, have you got the time? Or sorry, could you point right, me to... Right, right. Right. I mean, that, that all sounds so nice, by the way. Um, let, let me be clear. I think this is a great thing. Like for a culture, for a culture to err one way, oh, too polite or too rude. Obviously, I am like very jealous in a way. Very happy to hear that Britain, if any, if if it errs in any direction, it's overly polite. That that's like fantastic, and speaks like pretty highly of the British culture, honestly. 
St. Paul's, my favorite building in London. It's so beautiful. On the topic of British politeness, I also want to mention that Brits sometimes have a tendency to be very indirect. And even the way I said that was pretty indirect. So you can see I'm learning. For example, indirect, like not saying exactly what you mean because you're worried about offending someone. I'd say this definitely is something Americans do as well. Well, if you ask somebody for their opinion about, say, the sweater, um, instead of saying, no, I don't really like it, they might say, oh, it's lovely, but it's not really my cup of tea, or, <laughs> um, it's interesting. Number 11. It's, oh, no, the, it's interesting. Do you like my glasses? They're, they're interesting. Very brave choice for you to make. Uh, you definitely might hear that kind of indirect kind of approach from Americans as well. For as uh, loud and aggressive as we can be, I think Americans do tend to be a bit indirect at the same time. 11, the British sense of humor. The British sense of humor, famous, iconic. When you have a whole culture that has its own humor associated with it, like there's no American sense of humor. Like that's not a phrase that people know or say. British humor. That is literally something that has a meaning. It's, uh, it's really amazing, actually. Do you know what I just said about Brits being really polite and kind? Well, forget all about yes. that when it comes to close friends, <laughs> because your close friends, if they are British, are just going to make fun of you the whole time. <laughs> and it's never... Right, it's kind of like, oh my gosh, <laughs> that pop-up. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, this is very true for Americans as well. It's like... You get so comfortable with someone, the most, uh, kind of, the most, the best way to say you're comfortable, comfortable with someone, the most complimentary way to express you're comfortable with them, is to call them rotten names and make fun of them. And be like, hey, we're comfortable and close enough to tease each other and to be okay with it. That's like displaying a level of comfortableness that's complimentary. So it's actually quite a funny thing and very, very funny and enjoyable when you have friends that are close enough that you can call them names. <laughs> Never gonna stop and at some point, hopefully you're gonna just join them because if you don't, <laughs> I, I dread to think what might happen. And yeah, it, it helps with growing thick skin. It helps right. to assess how close. I don't know, like this might be more common in Britain. Like I wouldn't say that every friend group you find in America is going to do this. And I know British humor is very self-deprecating and ironic and uh, self-analyzing in a way. So this really does seem to go in the direction of British humor and British culture a bit more, teasing and making fun of your friends. You are with someone because if they are not ripping into you, you're probably not that close. <laughs> Number 12, let's talk about British fashion. Obviously oh. the way people dress varies across culture. I mean, talk about something I know nothing about, British fashion. Cultures and the UK is no exception. Now I could mention a few things here like the British love of fake tan and super short shorts, but I'm not- Fake tan and short shorts. I don't know. I don't, I don't even know what like the American fashion is. Like sweatpants, t-shirts, hoodies, like, I don't know. Uh, but then you'll find people who want to wear more preppy stuff. It's kind of all over the place. The fashion in America seems to be, uh, it's okay to be a little out there with what you wear, as long as you're confident and it's something that you think looks cool, kind of extends that feeling to everyone else. And then they'll be like, oh, that's cool. But for the most part, fashion, like generally in America is, I don't know, hoodies and t-shirts. Shorts, sure. Probably other stuff I'm not even aware of. I'm not going to do that. What I want to focus on instead, well, I mean, I've just done it, but what I want to focus on instead is the way Brits dress wrong for the weather. Scenario number one, the first warm day of the year. And by warm, I mean- The, the way Brits dress wrong for the weather. Okay. We've, we've gotten into double digits. Suddenly, you look around you and everyone, virtually everyone, is topless. It's, <laughs> it's absolutely astounding, especially- Oh no, we're talking about Celsius. Oh no, oh no. 10 degrees Celsius is how much Fahrenheit? 50. 
Oh my gosh, that's not that warm. Okay, I get it now. Brits, when the slightest inkling of warmness appears, will immediately go into like bathing suits. Yes, that is out. That is outrageous. Actually, <laughs> I would say in Scotland where I lived a few years ago, the second the sun is out, the guns are out, the just everything's out. Scenario <laughs> number two is the opposite. <laughs> that's that's interesting. That is a part of British fashion I did not know about. It's cold nights. And on some exceptionally cold nights, I've witnessed things like a group of girls, <laughs> age is irrelevant. Oh my gosh, and look at them in these small dresses out on a freezing, icy, snowy night. What is this about? Why, why is this a British thing? British fashion? Wearing inappropriate clothing for the temperature. Why? What is the reason? Suffering for fashion? I don't know. Just excitement that it's finally hot out and then you can wear like a t-shirt finally? Just excited? Walking to or from a club, I don't know, and <laughs> they are literally not wearing tights or a coat, just yeah. a really short dress and high heels and oh the eyes on the roads but that's their uniform. And I just am physically incapable of understanding how what? they don't perish. It literally makes- <laughs> Why not? Why not like a coat or something? I don't know what to think of this. Makes me feel like I'm David Attenborough observing a different species. <laughs> Number 13 is trashy holidays abroad. And this one- Tra Trashy holidays abroad. Okay, first I thought like Christmas, Thanksgiving, holidays. But I think in Britain, you say going on holiday? which we call vacation. So trashy vacations abroad? <laughs> Why do they have to be trashy? <laughs> I love. This is something British teenagers <laughs> tend to do after finishing their A-levels, i.e. graduating from high school. Okay. And basically there are only a handful of destinations these British teenagers tend to gravitate to. British, so graduating high school, it's funny because in America, like, it, the difference between traveling is so different. Americans very rarely travel outside of America, even with huge, huge, like, moments and events, like graduating high school. It's really rare for Americans to travel outside of America. I think because America is so big, uh, we just, I don't know. Especially the more I hear about Brits traveling outside of Britain so commonly, like it's nothing. Like, really blows my mind. It's quite different than Americans and how much, like, many Americans don't have a passport, don't travel internationally, they don't travel outside of America their entire life, maybe. That wouldn't be that crazy. So, uh, Brits, so high school comes up and they tend to go on a, a nice holiday and it has to be trashy and it's usually to places that are the same couple of places. <laughs> We've got Magaluf and Ibiza in Spain. We've got Malia, Cabos and Zanti in Greece and Ayanapa in Cyprus. I may have left- Spain, Greece and Cyprus. I had no idea that Brits did that. These are not even really vacation destinations for Americans. I mean, funny enough, Americans will go to the UK as a vacation or like Japan. Or, I don't know, <laughs> like, to the Caribbean? Like, and that's about it. Maybe, maybe Italy or something. But these are unique. Like, these are not American. Not things I hear commonly. Destinations for Americans. One or two out, but these are the epicenters of what can only be described as mayhem. Absolute <laughs> havoc. Utmost hedonism. Cheap. So it's like spring break in America, where all the young people are all at once going on vacation to the same places, like American teenagers vacationing to Florida during spring break. This is kind of similar, and it, that's why it's a little trashy. You gotta whip out the alcohol and the mayhem and whatnot. I think I get it. Cheap shots, scantily clad everyone. I mean, <laughs> it is awful and brilliant at the same time. I okay. myself went on one such holiday after graduating from high school. I went to Ibiza or Ibiza, <laughs> as okay. people like to say. And yeah. Like, I don't even, like, I don't know if I should be embarrassed to say, I don't even know where Ibiza, Ibiza is. 
Like, I don't even know where that is. It, it was exactly what you would expect. If you are <laughs> unfamiliar with this trend, I would like to point you in the direction of a very special show. The TV show is called Sun, Sex, and Suspicious Parents, and basically what? producers will invite a group of young people, <laughs> and unbeknownst to them, they'll also invite their parents, who will then watch their young offspring from afar and judge them silently. <laughs> what? Oh my gosh. This actually sounds like it would be very popular in America. I've never heard of this reality show. What the heck? Oh, the sad thing is it sounds like it'd be good. Silently, and in the end, not so silently for the various ways in which they've debased themselves. That brings okay. me to my next point, which is <laughs> British TV. There are some- British TV. I don't know what to think of British TV. I just watch American TV. I mean, Obviously, there's the American ripoffs of British TV, like The Office, famously. But other than that, I don't really have... Nothing comes to mind when I think British TV. Some completely outrageous shows on British TV. <laughs> Let me open right. the floor with something called Gogglebox. Gogglebox is a show... In Gogglebox. Never heard of it. In which you watch people watching TV. <laughs> Why? <laughs> I'm not sure. What? Watching people watch TV. I mean, it's kind of like Twitch, where you watch people play video games. Nah, it's still kind of different. Well, sometimes on Twitch now you watch people watch TV in the real life streaming. I, I kind of get it. I just didn't know there was a British uh, show based around that idea. And it was named Gogglebox. <laughs> There's Naked Attraction, where you choose a date based on looking at several people inside transparent boxes. What? What? How are these not in America? This is ridiculous. I thought America had the most ridiculous reality TV shows. These are... This is blowing my mind. I don't know. And, like, they're naked, like... Might have a hard time getting past the American censors, but I don't know. That slowly reveal every inch of their naked bodies, oh including gosh. the inches. Need I say more? No. Then there's another show what? called Dogs Might Fly, in which they, no, literally teach dogs how to fly a plane. <laughs> what? These British, the British TV is blowing my mind. I thought it was like, gonna be British comedies? It's these British reality shows that are seriously blowing my mind. Like, what is this? And don't worry, there's more. There's carjackers where people steal their friends' cars <laughs> and turn them into something else like a giant chicken nugget or a miniature space shuttle. And even what? the normal TV shows are a bit weird, like 8 out of 10 cats or Come Dine With Me, which is currently in its 40s. Come, come Dine With Me. Okay, one show, one show out of all of these. I've ever heard of. Come dine with me. And I've, I've seen a little bit of that and it's outrageous. These are crazy. These in the best way possible. Like, honestly, this sounds amazing. I, I want to see these. Six. Season. That's mad. Um, and when I say weird, by the way, you should know that, yes, I think objectively these are really strange concepts, yes. but I also think they are hugely enjoyable. All right, yes. we've reached point number four. These sound enjoyable. Like, maybe I'm a sucker for reality TV or just weird TV. But this, those actually sound great. 15, this is by no means <laughs> the full list of things I find weird about Britain, but these are the 15 that I chose to open this okay. topic up with. Okay. If you would like to hear more, by the way, do let me know. Don't forget to like and subscribe, etc. Okay, there you have it. I think that's it, right? Yeah, yeah, that's it. Oh, no, wait, there's one more. There's one more. I think she was just saying subscribe. Well, I'm definitely giving her video a like. This is by Girl vs. Globe. This has been great. I think her uh, choices of weird things in Britain have been wonderful. Actually, things I have never thought about or learned about before. And there's one more. X's? X messages with. The X's point are those X's that some Brits choose to end text messages with. The hmm? X's represent kisses. And as a teenager, I... Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, O's for hugs and X's for kisses. I don't find myself doing that terribly often, but in America, like, this is a thing, at least. I would know what the person meant by the X's. It's like kisses. It's, it's a bit 
bit romantic, a bit scandalous even. No, but this is a thing. I used to hugely overthink this, especially when huh. texting people I was potentially romantically interested right, in. Right, right. I would look at the exes and then be confused <laughs> as to how many I would- How many exes should you put at the end of a text? Oh my goodness. <laughs> supposed to send? Was I supposed to send any? Am I sending the wrong message? What okay. does- Two X's mean vis-a-vis -vis three. Am I wow. too much of a flirt? Are they too much of a flirt? Am I not <laughs> enough of a flirt? It was a complete- Oh, you get a message and they're like, they put four X's. Man, do they want me to drive over there right now? Minefield. Now, as an adult, I have made the executive decision to just not care because yes. people yes. use them in different ways. Some people use them to flirt. Some people use them to send to friends. <laughs> some people use them because they don't know how to finish a text message without them. Don't forget to subscribe. Man, okay. Well, exes are, they're a thing in America, in American texting. Not very common, honestly, but not unheard of. I'll say that. Are, are exes common in texting in Britain? That would be different if they're outright common. I guess I don't quite know. Uh, but anyway, this has been quite good. Very good, actually. Again, it's by Girl vs. Globe. I mean, these were, <laughs> some of these I had maybe thought about, but she went into some great nitty gritty little details that really, I keep saying this, if you don't live in another culture, like it's kind of hard to point this stuff out. Uh, Cause it's, if you're just living it all the time, you never really realize how weird it is to the rest of the world, particularly to Americans like me, that you have so many varieties of sandwich pre and pre-made in the grocery store. And uh, <laughs> how many times you say sorry, and <laughs> the carpets in the bathrooms, to mention a couple. So I really did quite enjoy this. I learned a thing or two as well, so very good. Anyway, if you enjoyed this as well, feel free to give this video a like or leave a comment. And if you're interested in more videos like this, me reacting to Britain and British culture, and just stuff in Britain that I've never seen before or learned about. Feel free to subscribe for more. And until then, thanks for watching and see you next time.